All right, what is up? We are doing the worksheet review number two here. Um, just to let you guys remember, the stuff up top here is from the 7 8. That's the first review sheet. These are the answers to that one. So um, you can go through and, and do that one on your own there, right? And then there's a link to the video and the QR code uh, for the solutions. And I'll post this one when we're done here. So, all right, first one triangular pot of land is 60 by 80 feet, it's a rectangular. So just draw for yourself a little rectangle, okay? Obviously not the scale. It's 80 by 60, and there's a diagonal cutting through. We have a right angle. We want to know the length of the pathway. So essentially, we're just looking at this right triangle right there. So we got to use Pythagorean theorem. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. All right. And then for this one, we're just going to plug in. So we do 60 squared plus 80 squared is equal to c squared, okay? It says 3,600 plus 6,400, that's 10,000. And then we take the square root and you're gonna get 100. And that's the length of the pathway. All right, and number two, we have right triangle. Key thing here is where's the right angle? It's either gonna tell you that a uh, certain angle is a right angle, or in this case, it'll tell you what the hypotenuse is. So we know the hypotenuse is AB, so the right angle is C, and the hypotenuse is 10. Angle B is 53, so that's the one down here in the corner. And I want to find AC, which is this side, to the nearest um, integer. So if you drew a triangle like this, or if you put A down here, it doesn't really necessarily matter. Remember, you're looking for the, the angle, and then you want to label your sides. So as long as we have an angle and two sides, even though one's unknown, uh, we're going to use SOKATOA. So, so, ka, toa. And then we're just doing, in this case, opposite hypotenuse, we're doing sine. So the sine of 53 is equal to the opposite, which is x over 10. And then we just cross multiply. So x equals 10 times the sine of 53. And then you just got to take your calculator out from there. Um, you can bust it out for yourself. And round to the nearest integer. And it should be uh, 8. It's 7.986. 7.986. So just to use accordingly. All right, number three. We have another ratio question. So remember we said before, we're going to let x be the scale factor or the common factor. And then we're going to attach an x. So we have two sides of 3x and 4x here, okay? So 3x and 4x. So one side is 3x, the other side is 4x. We're using x because we don't know what the numbers are, but we know they have to be in this uh, ratio. So as long as you multiply 3 and 4 by the same number, we'll always get um, sets of sides that will be in that ratio. Um, so here we have a uh, hypotenuse of 10, and then we can just do Pythagorean theorem. So 3x squared plus 4x squared is equal to 10 squared. Remember, you can't add these together and you need to square the quantity. That's why I use parentheses here. So this is 9x squared, 16x squared. Remember, it's 4x times 4x, so that's why the x squared stays on the x. Okay, it gives you 25x squared. Now, the squared term is technically just the x. So what we want to do is get that by itself before we square root. So x squared is equal to 4, square root it and you're gonna get x is equal to two. So the longer leg was the four x, right? So four times two is eight, and that becomes the measure of the longer leg. All right, number four, uh, same type of question, rectangle. So just draw yourself a rectangle, okay? It has size of 10 and eight. So now AD is 10, so I'm gonna label that as the longer side, 10. And then CD is eight, so that makes this B. All right, and the diagonal AC is drawn, and they want to know what is the measure of angle CAD. That's the angle down here. So, same thing. I'm looking for an angle, so I got to use SOPATOA. So, across is opposite. Across on the right angle is the hypotenuse, and then the other side is the uh, adjacent side. So, so, ka toa. O and A makes the tangent here. So we're going to do the tangent of the angle is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. The tangent of x is equal to 8 over 10. 
and then we're going to use the tan inverse. That's the tan with the little negative one. It looks like an exponent, but that's referred to as the tangent inverse. Okay, when you get to A2, you'll talk about precalc, the inverse of a function, and that's the, um, that's the notation for it. So we cross that out, and then all we have to do is do that in our calculator. So tan inverse, 8 over 10, and we get 38.659, so nearest degree is going to be 39 degrees. Okay. We'll do a little law of sines for the next one, right? It's for number five. So anytime you can use soak doa, you can also use the law of sines. So if you're if you're familiar with it, go ahead. Okay, remember we're looking for the right angle. So here at C, A and B go on the other two legs. It doesn't necessarily matter. It says A B is 10, that's my hypotenuse. I have a 90 degree angle and A is 63. Remember, if A is 63, you also know this is 27, just because it's 90 minus 63. Um so just keep that in mind. So the law of sines, we're trying to find the measure of angle B. So now we know that angle B is equal to 27. And we're trying to find the length of BC, which we'll call X. So I can pair up. So you can see you have 63 and X over here. And I have the 90 and 10. So I'm going to do the sine of 63 over X is equal to the sine of um, 90, the angle, over the side 10. I cross multiply, so 10 times the sine of 63 is equal to x times the sine of 90. By the way, the sine of 90 is just 1, so um, not a big deal. Normally, though, we're going to want to divide by the sine of 90 and then type that in there. Simply. So that's all you're going to do for this one. So it's 10 sine 63 over the sine of 90, and I get... 8.9106, so uh, nearest hundredth is 8.91. And if you did Sokotoa, right, from the 63, you could do the sine of 63 is equal to x over 10. And when you cross multiply, you're still going to do 10 times the sine of 63. So either way, you're going to be good there. All right, next page, if I can get myself to it here. Oh my gosh. All right, there we go. That took way too long. All right, number six. In the diagram of triangle ABC, we know that angle ACB, so a, uh, angle ACB is 90, so the right angle up here. Angle A is 60 degrees. And we know the length of AD is 3. So as soon as it tells us this is 60, we know that this is a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Furthermore, that makes this a 30, 60, 90 right triangle as well. Because I may have an altitude drawn, which creates a right angle. So let's just separate these triangles for a second. If we only look at the small triangle on the right, and we know that it's a 30, 60, 90 right triangle, normally my sides are going to be x for the bottom, 2x for the hypotenuse, and then x radical times the square root of 3, x radical 3 for the uh, longer leg. Now I know this is 3, so this is 3. That means this hypotenuse is 2 times 3, or 6, right? And this is 3 times radical 3, so just 3 radical 3. So now I know what all these are. Now, if we drop the other triangle, okay, it's the same thing. This side is x, the hypotenuse is 2x. And the side of the bottom is x radical 3. So knowing that this is 3 radical 3, because these two sides are the same, okay, all we have to do is double that. So 2 times 2 times 3 to the square root of 3 is just 2 times 3 with the radical 3 attached. So it's 6 radical 3. If you were to do this, x uh, 3 radical 3 times radical 3, remember this just gives you 3, right? This is the square root of 9 which is 3, so this thing just turns out to be 6, and that's it, okay? Um, so in our cases, though, AC, right, was 6. Um, we needed BC, which we figured out was 6 radical 3, and we needed CD, which was this side right here, which is 3 radical 3. 
Now, if you uh, didn't use it, you could just use SOPATOA or Law of Sines, right, with this. And you do it like, for instance, the cosine of 60 is equal to 3 over x, where x is this side here. And then you're just going to solve. And you would get x is equal to 3 divided by the cosine of 60, right? Cosine of 60, by the way, is a half. So 3 divided by a half is going to give you 6. Um, 3 over cosine of 60. See, you're going to get 6 right there. And then what you can do is use, use Pythagorean theorem here. So if you do 6 squared minus 3 squared, and you take the square root, right, you're going to get 27, and the square root of that is 3 radical 3. And then um, you know that dB here is 9, right? Well, they gave you that this was 9. So this is 12. I stopped for a second because I'm like, we found out it was not melt, right? Um, and then you can use this to get this side right here. So if you were to do um, 12 squared minus 6 squared, you're going to get 108. And if you take the square root of 108, you're going to get 6 radical 3. So that's just where that comes from, okay? And even if you just do the square root of 108, and you're going to get that 10.39, you do 6 squared to 3, you're going to get the same thing. All right? So that's how it's working out, and it's going to work out that way for us. Um, moving forward. You know, why did I do this? 3 times 3 is not 6, people. It is 9. So that is correct. It should be 9. Um, hang on. Simple math over here. All right. So number 7, we changed this word legs to hypotenuse last time in class and in the last remind. So if you draw yourself uh, 45, 45, 90, and we call the hypotenuse 8 radical 2, uh, remember in the general, the 45, 45, 90 was x radical 2, x and x. So here you can see the x radical 2 is 8, so the legs are just equal to 8. That's it. Okay. If you don't remember that, you can use Pythagorean theorem. So x squared plus x squared is equal to 8 radical 2 quantity squared. Just use your calculator for this, guys. It's not that hard, right? Um, this is 64 times 2, so you're going to get 2x squared, and this turns into 128. Divided by 2, you get x squared is equal to 64, and then we bust out the square root, and you're going to get 8 either way, okay? Number 9, or I should say number 8 here. So we have a top of the lighthouse. So, I don't know. That's my lighthouse. That's all you're getting from me, people. All right. Uh, 200 feet above sea level, angle depression to boat measures 52 degrees. So, we got a boat. I'm on a boat. All right. Boat. All right. 52 degrees. Okay, it's 200 feet above sea level for the lighthouse. Um, we want to know the distance from the boat to the foot of the lighthouse. That's the bottom. So the foot of the lighthouse means where, like, where the hits the ground over here. So how far is that? Um, once again, you could use the law of signs if this is 52. This has to be 38. All right, 90 minus it. And then you can just go to work with the law of signs. Or in our case, um, we're going to use Sokotoa. So from this triangle, from the 52 degree angle, that's my adjacent side, there's my hypotenuse, here's my opposite, and then I just go to work. So sine of 52 is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. The sine of 52 is equal to 200 over x. I cross multiply. x times the sine of 52 is equal to 200. Here I got to get rid of the sine of 52, so we divide by that. Anytime you're looking for a side, you cross multiply, and then x is going to equal, you bust out the calculator, we do 200 divided by sine 52, hit enter, we get that guy right there. Okay, and it's 253 point, what are you doing, nearest foot, 254. Like I may have gotten a different answer last time, but we're good. Okay, so um, that's the process on that one.
I know why. Can you tell me why? There is a half credit deduction going on in this question for this exam. Opposite and adjacent. This is why we do this every time, right? So, Katoa, we should be using tangent, not sine. So, we just have to change all these to tans. And our answer is going to switch. So let's try that again. What about a tangent of 52? How about 156? That's a little bit better. And that was the answer that we definitely got last time. So number nine, warning, this is just a review problem. It is not a uh, question you're going to see on your exam. Anytime we see altitude drawn to hypotenuse, we draw our chopped out right triangle, OK? We know that CD is the altitude, and we know the hypotenuse is AB. So it's right triangle ABC. So hypotenuse is AB, CD, right, is my altitude here. And then I know that AD is X. So there's my X. Okay, DB is 5, and CA, which is this side, is 6. So we draw out our three chopped out right triangles here, big guy, medium guy, right, and then the mini me, okay? In the really big triangle, the only, we have two sides. We have the six over here, and we have the whole bottom, which is x plus five. In the medium sized triangle, we only have the longer leg here, which is five, and then the small triangle, right, we have a, a hypotenuse, if it's across from right angle, of six, and a short leg of x. And so you can see the paired up sides that are happening here. If we do our proportion, you can do 6 over, if you want to do x, or 6 over x plus 5. We can do this. And then since we went 6 was the short leg, we're going to go back to the small triangle and do the short leg. So cross multiply. 6 times 6 is 36. And then I do x times x plus 5. 36 is equal to x squared plus 5x. I'm going to move that 36 over to the other side. Anytime you start getting the x squared, do not just take the square to both sides, people. This is a huge mistake that you guys are making. Not you guys. Some people are making consistently is like taking the square root and then just dropping this off and leaving this as 5x. That is a no-no. You cannot do that. Okay, You have to take the square to the whole quantity, and that is a messy situation. All right? So remember, quadratics, get equal to 0, try to factor and solve. If you can't do that, bust out your... Um, quadratic formula, okay? So 0 equals x squared plus 5x minus 36. This is when we bust out the old diamond here, right? A times C is on the top, that's negative 36. The B term and the one in the middle goes on the bottom. And I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 36 and add to 5. So you can kind of go through your head like 1 and 36, no, 2 and 18, you know, 3 and 12, no, 4, hey, look at that, 4 and 9 will work. And I need the 4 to be negative to give me positive 5. So I do my two sets of parentheses. My x's go in the front. That's how we get x squared. I drop a negative 4 and a positive 9 into the backs there. And then we just do our zero product property. So if x minus 4 is 0, that means x is going to equal to 4. Or our option is x plus 9 is equal to 0. And x is going to equal negative 9. We're then going to say, hold up, wait a minute. We can't put any negatives in it because we're going to get a negative length here. So we're going to reject, right, send it back. No negative lengths, people. And so we're just looking for AD. That was our answer. We're also asking for AB, so just be careful. And then AD is equal to 4. All right, on, on to the next one. Number 10, just a quick Pythagorean theorem questions here. Find the value of x. That's my hypotenuse. So I can use a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. You can use that for both questions. Um, you're going to do 9 and 12. You may recognize it's a 3, 4, 5, where everything is multiplied by 3. Um, if not, that's OK. So 81 plus 144. This gives me 225 square root. And this gives me 15. Remember, whole numbers are considered a simple stratical form because we started with a radical. We simplified it and ended up with 15. In this formula, I'm going to use the c squared minus a squared equals b squared formula because this is when I'm looking for a leg. So just 10 squared minus 6 squared 
is equal to b squared. That's 100. Take away 36, which is 64. Bust out that square root. Give me some eights, and we're good to go. All right? <laughs> Number 11, write the ratio for each diagram and write. So if you are taking a look at the first one, we wanted to do m. So we'll start with m. We're going to do it in blue. So the opposite is 3. The adjacent is 4. The hypotenuse is 5. Sine is O over H. So the O is 3 over 5. And I have a ratio. Using O for the next one, the opposite and the adjacent switch. Okay? The hypotenuse stays the same. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. So opposite 4, adjacent 3, we get 4 over 3. Ka cosine is A over H. So adjacent from O is 3 over 5, hypotenuse. Sine O over H from O, opposite 4, hypotenuse 5. And there you go. All right. Number 12, determine whether or not you would make an acute obtuse or right triangle with the sides. So three things. Number one, please remember, we are going to use the Pythagorean theorem for both of these here. They're all, yeah, here we go. So we have three options. If it is an acute triangle, that means that the a squared plus b squared side is bigger. It wins. It's a, if it's obtuse, that means that c squared is bigger. And if it's right, that means that they're equal. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Pay attention to the numbers. Which one's bigger? If the a squared side is bigger, it's acute. If the c squared side is bigger, it's obtuse. And if they're equal, then it is right. We just go to work. We do 7 squared plus 8 squared. This is one way you can do this. You can calculate 9 squared and just tell me what they're equal to. So this is 49 plus 64. That's a 3. That's 113. This is 81. So this is bigger than that, right? Bigger, bigger, all the way down, okay? So we're going to say that this is acute. And if you had to explain, you would just say, because I said so, no. Because a squared plus b squared is bigger than c squared. Coming over here, here's the other option. You're going to do the old a squared plus b squared equals c squared, except now we're going to put a little question mark over the equal sign, which means, I, I don't know if it's equal, I'm checking. All right, so here we get 100 plus 144 equals something. All right, um, this is equal to 200, oh, 16 squared, right? I'm going to put c squared here. There you go. 16 squared. This is equal to 196. All right. I believe I lied. It is not equal to 196. That is a different number. That's 14 squared. 16 squared. 256, people. 256. So this is 244. This is 256. We don't really need this uh, question mark equal sign anymore. We can definitely put down. Uh, my little less than symbols are eating the 256, right? And now we can say that, yo, this sun is obtuse because C squared is bigger than A squared plus B squared. All right. Number 13 is the Pythagorean theorem question. It just got a little crazy. So in this question, this is 2x for both of these. So each of these sides is x. So if I'm looking for the length of the side, I'm going to recognize that this is just a right triangle here, okay? Um, because it's isosceles and I drew an altitude, it creates a right triangle. So I have x13 and x7 as my sides. So when I bust out a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and I plug in the x and x plus 7 is going to go in for a and b. Remember, use parentheses when you plug in here. Okay, so really when I do x plus 7 squared, we're actually doing x plus 7 times itself. So this is x times x, or x squared. Then we have x times 7, which is 7x. Then we have 7 times x, which is another 7x. And then we have 7 times 7 here, which is 49. So really, for this, we're going to get x squared plus 14x plus 49. So I'm going to replace this with this part. It is not equal to x squared plus 49. There is a middle term, okay? 
It's the square of the first, the square of the second, and then two times the sum of the x and seven. That's why you get this. Okay. Um, I should say two times the product of x and seven. So this stays as x squared. We now know that this is equal to another x squared plus 14x plus 49 is equal to 169. And the same thing. I am now going to bring everything into one side and get it equal to zero. And then I'll combine like terms. So I have 2x squared here. I have a 14x here. And I have a negative 120 left over when I subtract. The first thing you should look for is a GCF when you factor. Is there anything that's in common between all the terms? And here there's a 2. So I'm going to get rid of this 2 first by dividing. Or if you want to factor out a 2, you can and put it in front. Okay? So I get left with x squared plus 7x minus 60 is equal to 0. So I just made my life a lot easier. Okay? Because this is a lot easier to factor than this is. So when I do my diamond, it's a times c, so negative 60. Uh, B, the term in the middle is on the bottom, and then I'm looking for numbers that multiply to 60 and add to 7. So, like 1 and 60, 3 and 30, 3 and 10, 4 and stuff, 15. Um, and you're eventually going to settle on the fact that 5 and 12 will give you 60, and you need a positive, so you're going to get a negative 5. So, we do two sets of parentheses. We do x minus 5 in the first one x plus 12 in the second one. It doesn't matter if these are switched around. It's just one of these should be x minus 5, one x plus 12. And then we set both equal to 0 and we solve. And remember, there's an or in between because it can be either or, not both. So not an and. So x is equal to 5 or x is equal to negative 12. And then remember, no negative lengths, people. So this will not be a correct answer. All right. No negative lengths. All right, what's the length of the base? So if this is 5 and 5, the whole base, the base is 10. Don't drop the base, people. Don't do it. Mm -mm. But it is all about that base. I'll be here all day spouting out terrible puns if you need one. All right. Number 14, 15, 16, and 17 all relate back to the same thing we talked about. If I have two angles, A and B, and they add to 90, then the sine of angle A is equal to the cosine of angle B, right? And we can switch it. The cosine of A is equal to the sine of angle B. So just keep that in mind, that if the angles add to 90, the sine and cosines are equal, because that means that I'm talking about the two acute angles, okay? So if C is equal to 90, what do we know about which is true? So is the sine of A equal to the sine of B? No, the cosines aren't the same. No, this is not right because I'm not supposed to use the right angle. So it's got to be choice four. Okay, when in doubt, just write it out. The sine of A, right from A, opposite. So BC over hypotenuse, which is AB. And if you do the cosine of A, right, you're going to get AC over AB. And then you can just check it, okay? So the sine of B, all right, is going to be AC over AB. The cosine of B is going to be BC over AB. And then you can just compare. Like, hey, look at these are equal, these are equal. Ah, oh, that's not a choice. So all right, it's got to be this one, okay? Which one is always equivalent to an uh, S? An X? Oh. This is, that's hysterical. This is supposed to be sine x when zero is between, when x is stuck in between zero and 90. So if x is between zero and 90, we're talking about it being one of these two acute angles, okay? So if this is x, let's say this is like 10, right? This would be 80, 20 would be 70. So essentially what you're doing is you're doing this is x, and then this is 90 minus x. So that's why this is choice one, all right? Okay. In the right triangle, if the sine of 40 minus x is equal to the cosine of 3x, what's the value of x? So remember, if they're giving you just that they're equal, these are the two angles, and they have to add to 90. All right, they're complements. If they tell you the sine of x is equal to something and the cosine of x is equal to something, then those things are equal. But if you're talking about the fact that sine of this angle equals this, uh, the cosine of this angle, then the angles add to 90. So it looked like something like 
the sine of x is equal to 3x plus 2. And the cosine of x is equal to, or y, is equal to um, 6x. There we go, right? And if x plus y is equal to 90, right? That's kind of what you're doing here. So just keep that in mind. Here you just set this equal to this. Here we're doing 90. So 40 minus x plus 3x is equal to 90. That's really 40 plus 2x is equal to 90. Take away the 40, we get 50. So if 2x is equal to 50, when we divide by 2, we get x is equal to 25, and we're all done. You can also just check, right? Plug these numbers in. If you plug 10 in here, you're going to get 30. And 30, is the sine of 30 equal to cosine of 30? No, don't choose it, okay? Battery's running out, so we got to go quick. Number 17, when instructed, right? Um, why are these the same? And essentially it's just, if you do the sine of uh, 28, and then this is 62 degrees over here when you do 90 minus, you're going to get the same thing. So if 28 plus 62 is equal to 90, then the sine of 28 is going to equal the cosine of 62. And since these are both equal to H, J over 28, we're all good. Okay, uh, look on the answer key for the a good explanation for that. Um, my battery is about to die, so I just want to get through this. So. And the next question, we really have two right triangles here, okay? All right, we have a seven degree angle, we have a 16 degree angle, they're both right triangles, and they both have a side here of 16, sorry, 125. So if I'm looking for this piece right here, all I really wanna do is subtract this from the whole thing, take this away from the whole thing. So here, this is the opposite and the adjacent, this is also the opposite and adjacent. So really all I have to do is the tangent of the angle. So let's say 16 is equal to 125 over x. Okay, we'll call that x. Cross multiply x times the tangent of 16 is equal to 125. Divide up by the tangent of 16. And now we know what x is. Okay, we're going to do the same thing.